Mistake number three when you're shopping for a refinance is you think that the rate you're quoted is the only rate that you can get. Hi y'all, this is Cullen Gandy from Interfirst Mortgage and I want to be your representative for the lowest cost refinance and purchase transactions in Georgia. During the next few minutes, I want to give you a rundown of some of the things that you should be looking for when you're doing a refinance on your home, but also some of the pitfalls that you may want to avoid along the way. So as some of you guys may know, we are experiencing among the lowest interest rates in American history. So it makes sense that we're getting a lot of folks coming in trying to refinance their homes. I mean, if you can cut a couple hundred dollars off of your mortgage in a time where everybody's stuck in their house, can't go to their jobs, can't go to the bars, I mean, why wouldn't you do that? But understandably, a lot of folks don't really know what they're actually looking for while they're looking for it. So in order to make it a little bit easier on folks like you while you're shopping, and let's be honest, a little bit easier on folks like me too, uh, I wanna give you a little bit of an idea of what you should be looking out for when you're protecting your interest and looking for a refinance. So the first thing you need to look out for when you're hunting for a refinance is what it's actually gonna cost you. A lot of folks get sort of roped in by the actual uh, note rate or the, the first interest rate that a lot of these lenders are advertising without actually understanding that the real cost of the loan could be several eighths of a point or even a quarter or half or even a full point higher than what is advertised. So your first question should be, what is the actual cost of my loan? At my company, Interfirst, an online nationwide lender, our gimmick is that we have no lender or origination fees associated with our loans. So when you're looking at the note rate or the first rate that is advertised, you wanna make sure that that is fairly close to what's called the APR or effective rate. The APR is important because that is the interest rate that shows you what your actual interest rate is going to be when you take into account certain kinds of cost. Now the biggest cost that uh, is added to the APR is always going to be anything having to do with origination fees or lender fees. So the next time you see a lender saying, hey, we can give you this 10 year or 15 year uh, refinance for like 1.875 or two, Ask them, hey, what's the actual cost of the loan? Because it could end up being a quarter or a half or even a full point higher. So what you end up paying doesn't necessarily reflect what you end up uh, agreeing to. The second biggest trick that people fall into when they're shopping for a refinance is they don't get their rate locked. So a lot of times when folks apply for a mortgage with a company, they get what's called a loan estimate document back. And on that document, it's going to list all of your costs. Now remember what I said about the APR. But also, it's going to list whether or not your rate is actually locked. So your initial rate, or the note rate, is basically the interest rate that your lender wants to say, hey, look, this is the one that we can provide for you. If it doesn't say in that little top right corner of the loan estimate, uh, locked, then that means that maybe you should be asking them a question of whether or not they can actually honor this rate, or if it's just a little bit of wishful thinking on both of your parts. So at a firm like mine, what we do is we automatically lock the rate that we can offer you after the application. That way we let you know that the rate we've quoted you is the one that we can guarantee you from start to finish. Uh, so a lot of times other lenders when they don't lock this rate they're trying to wait around what's called a float game where they try to float up and down with the market hoping probably in the next few days they can lock in a rate that sort of resembles the one that they gave you a quote on. That's not really the way that you want to handle the rest of your financial future, so why would you do it with the, uh, the financial situation in your home? Mistake number three when you're shopping for a mortgage is you think that the rate that they offer you is the only rate you can get. Now once you've found a company that you think can offer you a really, really good deal on a mortgage, go ahead and apply to that company. Don't really worry about the fact that they're going to have to pull your credit or that things might happen that lower your credit in order to get a locked in rate. This is why credit exists after all, and this is why we maintain a careful eye over our credit. Once you pull that first mortgage, it's called a hard pull, it will affect your credit somewhat. But for a two week period after that, every other mortgage uh, company that you apply for is going to end up being what's called a soft pull. So it won't affect your credit as much, just a little bit. If you don't apply with the company, they can't just lower the rate if they want to. This is something that the government and regulators have created 
so that we would be dissuaded from any fraudulent or shady kind of dealings with customers. If we say, hey, oh no, well, actually we can give you a lower rate than we can give you, then why don't we just offer it, right? So by law, we have to give you the rate that our internal pricing has come up with. But make sure that you protect your interest by vying with several different companies and leveraging those loan estimates and quotes. See, the government has a law called the Pipeline Protection Act. And what that does is it gives a mortgage company the ability to then lower or match a rate if there's another competitive offer that they can get on it. So let's say you get a loan estimate document from one of our competitors. You can bring that document over to me and we can take it into consideration and perhaps lower the rate. In fact, during the course of my business every week, I probably do this 10 to 20 times a week for people to get rates lowered for them. A lot of times it can be up to a quarter of a point or even a half of a point. You know, if we're not as competitive as we thought we were, we want to make sure that we can be competitive and keep your business for you. Well, this is the case with every lender. You know, every lender has the ability to take in these loan estimate documents to make sure that we can give you the best rate possible. And at Interfirst, I make sure that I can do that. And I have the discretionary ability to do that myself. All across the nation, and especially in Atlanta and other major city centers in the South, you're gonna see that home inventory is going down with the interest rates. And so you wanna protect yourself in the event that these interest rates go back up and you're gonna miss out on savings that could potentially be in the hundreds of thousands over the life of your loan. I mean, think about it. If you lock in a rate in the twos, you're gonna to wanna to stay with that for the rest of your life if you can qualify for it. So now is the time that you need to be jumping on it and being proactive about your financial future. And the best way to do that is to lock in a rate that you can live with while you're living in a home. I have been writing outrageous offers for people left and right. I think I've done like 60 people that I've locked in just in the past two months. And I anticipate that that's going to only increase coming to this new year. However, good stuff, you know, it doesn't always last. You know, you gotta count on the fact that the only thing that stays the same is change. And so lock in a good rate while you can get it. And if you haven't done it yet, please consider it, jump on it. With that being said, happy hunting. And I hope I can see you on the other side. This has been Cullen Gind with Interfirst Mortgage. Have a great rest of your day. Ciao.